Hey there guys, Sean Michael here from WinBeta and welcome back to another video. Today is our next video in our Windows 10 in depth series and today we're taking a look at Microsoft Edge, Microsoft's relatively new browser inside of Windows 10. Let's go ahead and get started. First off, I want to say thanks for this wallpaper idea. Somebody uploaded a smaller version of this and it gave me the idea to kind of do this fill screen thing on one of the old Windows backgrounds. So as I said, we're going to take a look at the Microsoft Edge browser. This is Microsoft's new browser and it's pretty sleek. It's pretty fast. It has all sorts of nice features and we're going to go through those today. So the first thing we're going to go through is the start page. This is when you open up a new tab or the browser and it has the first tab here. You can have the top sites that you go to and then all sorts of news and interest, that sort of thing. It even has app suggestions if there's an app for what you're looking at on that front page, which is very nice. You can customize this page by just clicking this. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, so it says customize there. So you can have a top sites from your news and your news feed, just top sites, blank, you can change region, and you can select specific things that you want, and that's gonna change what appears on here. I believe you can also edit, yeah, you can also edit these if you don't like one of these being your top sites. So I don't want my I don't know. <laughs> you don't want your work to know that you're on 9gag all day. Maybe take that off there. You can X that out and it's gone. So that's quite nice. And I appreciate having a pretty fresh and sleek look. It's almost like a website in itself that aggregates a lot of information. But anyway, moving on. There are favorites, as there are with almost every browser that I can think of. And you can import those from other uh, browsers. So if you go into settings, there's another way to do this as well if you just go through favorites. But if you go through settings, you can say view favorite settings and you can import them from Internet Explorer or Chrome. This is especially useful if you're jumping on Edge for the first time. Maybe you've been a Chrome loyalist and you're willing to take the jump. And obviously if you've been on a Windows thing before using Internet Explorer, that's a nice feature as well. You can change things like light and dark theme as well on Microsoft Edge. This is making its way throughout all of the Microsoft apps. It just got added to movies and TV today. I prefer dark myself, but obviously you can choose your own preference. You can customize things like what it starts with, which pages it goes to, and um, all that sort of thing. Next up is reading mode. So when you're in an article here, maybe you have a longer article. Uh, this one's probably a little bit long because it's really got a lot of photos here in it. And you don't want to have a lot of fluff. Maybe you're on a website that has a lot of things in the background or it's just kind of a sloppy layout. If you click this little tab here, or little icon rather here, it says reading view. It's going to convert the page, going to take a second here, and then you get this nice reading view. It's just text, and you get the little GIF or GIF, depending on how you say it, and that's great. So you get just the text here. It's a much less cluttered web page. But if you don't like that, you can actually change that setting inside of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, inside, yeah, inside of reading view, scroll down, scroll down here. You got light, medium, and dark. So let me show you what the, the uh, dark reading view looks like. You can actually hot switch this while it's in reading view, I believe. So we'll go ahead and change that here. Change this, you're in dark, you're in medium, you're in light. Light's a bit bright for me, so, you know, but if you, or if you go with the default, it's got that little yellowish tint to it, trying to emulate paper. So maybe go again with the dark theme. That is pretty nice. So also inside the settings menu here, inside of Windows, uh, or inside of Microsoft Edge, you have advanced settings. If you scroll down here, you get even more, and you get things like show the home button or not. These are just little tweaks that make it, you know, something a little more, uh, personalized. You can decide if you want Adobe Flash Player activated or not. Maybe you don't like that and you can just turn that off. And there are quite a few different things that you can do inside there. So it's kind of like the layout, very basic stuff inside of that aspect of Microsoft Edge. But on top of just layouts being customized, there are a lot of features inside of Edge. It doesn't have everything that people want yet, but it does have a lot of features one of which is Cortana. So she has some tasks that she can do and she's built right inside here. So if you are reading an article and you don't know what a word means, you can just get a definition. I, obviously I know what the word audience means, that's you guys. But if I wanna know what that is, I can right click and then say ask Cortana and she's gonna define it right there. Other things that you can do, if you're shopping, she can have coupons show up, she can have information show up like opening hours for restaurants, that's gotta be supported in some cases, so it's not uh, all throughout. But I know like Staples, I'm almost positive that they have coupons, that sort of thing that work through Cortana. Another thing you can do if you're typing in something like weather, if I can spell, 
whether it's going to answer directly in there without you having to actually do that search. So this is skipping a little step. Obviously, you could do that through Cortana as well. But if you want to stay inside of the browser, you can do that pretty easily. All right, other things that you can do inside of Edge. You have reading, you got favorites. You have a drawing mode. That's right. So if you're here, you can draw on a web page. Maybe I really like one of my uh, coworkers' articles and I want to send them some notes here. And I said, man, I really like these. All right, so you're going to draw here. You just click this icon, make a web note. That's going to freeze those. It's not going to keep playing the GIFs. So you have a few different options here. You have a pen, you can customize colors. So if you want something like a bright blue, you can say, hello, this is Sean. I'm left-handed, but I use a mouse right-handed, so this is going to look terrible. Sorry about that. And you can use a highlighter. This might show up a little better in um, if you're in like a light mode, but you can still use it here. You see, you say, I want to highlight this and say, oh, look, that's a nice feature there. I want to highlight that. If you don't like something you made, you can obviously just erase it. That's pretty straightforward. And you can add little notes. So you can say, oh, no. Yeah, here we go. You say, man, this is great. There you go. Bam. You got just delete that. And and if you want to crop a specific thing, you can do that as well. And that or and then that gets copied. So if you really like your web notes, there you go. You have all that done, and you want to save that. You can click Save Web Note, and you can save it in your various OneNote uh, sections. You can put it in your favorites or in your reading list, which is fairly nice. Exit on. Oh, you can also just share it, just straight up. That's great if you uh, point out something funny, just share it on Twitter or whatever. All right, so if you, uh, speaking of reading lists, that's another feature here. So in addition to favorites, you have a reading list that you can add things to. Uh, history, I, honestly, it didn't seem to show my history. I don't know if I have that turned off. If I do, I'm sorry. It's not intentional. It just doesn't seem to track mine. And then it also keeps track of all your downloads here. So whatever it's doing there, you can see a history of all of your downloads. Now, there's some things that were added inside Microsoft Edge in the November update, which are fairly nice. Here's one right here. You get this tab preview. That's wonderful. Great. Looks wonderful. You see what's coming up on the tab there. Another feature that came in relatively recently is casting media. So similar in functionality to Chromecast, but not through that piece of hardware, um, you can cast media. So I don't have a Miracast device on me right now, but if you did click Cast Media, it would cast this here. And that's working through the Miracast, which uh, is a medium that works on a lot of different tablets and smartphones, and also now can work directly inside the Edge browser, which is really nice. I, I really like that they just add features here. Like I said, and we'll get to the end what they don't have. They don't have everything that you'd want in this browser, browser just yet, but it is steadily improving. All right, so then in addition to that, there are some touch specific features. Now I'm using a mouse, but I guess I have a touch screen here. So if I tap this, I can go find on page. Sometimes you don't have a keyboard on you. you want to use control F and you want to do that? That's pretty nice. You could do that through a standard keyboard input, which is just a nice little touch feature. Example of something they don't have touch feature wise. If I go from one page to another, in the old IE 11 days, they had swipe to navigate back and forth and they don't have that now so that's no fun uh there are a few features that kind of got lost in transition and I, I wish they were still here but they're not and hopefully they get added over time the um the most glaring exception is um extensions the they are not in edge and honestly some people won't use it as a browser until they're there uh other little things to show you just that microsoft is spending time if you have a video, it can't be a YouTube video. I think it has, it, it has to be a certain type of video. But you can now right-click to play. You can right-click to pause. You can mute, save the video as. You can change the play speed and that sort of thing. So you can see here that Edge has a lot of features. Microsoft is working on it. It's getting continually better. It is improving. I know that it's not finished, and it certainly wasn't finished before the November update in terms of stability. I don't want to try to test it on here, but honestly, if I try to... Before, if I tried to put uh, a status on Facebook, it didn't even always work. And honestly, it still has that issue. So Microsoft Edge, a little bit in the works, but it is being uh, worked on. So that's about it for Microsoft Edge. Like I said, it's not exactly finished. It still needs extensions, but it has a lot of features. And honestly, it is pretty fast, which for your everyday browsing needs is vitally important. 
As a reminder, if you want your wallpaper in one of our future videos, make sure to upload it into the OneDrive folder that's linked in the article accompanying this video. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.